What is the biggest problem facing Enlisted right now? If you think it is the player count balance or even the progression, then you are dead wrong. What's up, scholars? My name is Enlightened Enlisted, and today we're going to be solving the campaign problem. All right, so this issue has been covered countless times on both Reddit and the forum post, but few people seem to have a solution. And after spending a few months to think about it, I think I found the answer. So if you want this video to reach the developers, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and of course, share this video with them. Currently, we have five campaigns, with a sixth one on the way with the Pacific. This is obviously going to cause problems for the community, as the player base is going to be split again multiple times. Not to mention, it's already going to leave people angry from unlocking this same weapon over and over again between the different campaigns. No one likes to play against a bunch of bots, and if you are wondering if that person is a bot or not, then I suggest you check out this video here after this one. These are all valid complaints that we've heard over and over again on my live stream, on the forums, and so forth. So the big question is, how do we fix this? Well, the developers are basically going to have to redo the entire progression system. But before you get worried about losing all your time grinding, hear me out. Instead of campaigns being the way we search for games, we should actually search for them based on a nation, similar to how we do in War Thunder. But instead of just hitting the reset button on everyone's account, we should take the campaign system we already have to determine where people would be in that nation's tech tree. For the US, I would use the Normandy campaign, and for the British, I would use the Tunisia campaign, for example. Now you might be thinking right now, Enlighten, how does this help at all? Well, now factions such as the British and the US are going to be able to play together on existing campaigns such as Normandy or Tunisia. This will also allow developers to add new maps and modes that are indicative to World War II such as Market Garden or the Battle of the Bulge without adding a whole new campaign, thus splitting the player base even further. More importantly, this would allow us to add factions such as France or Romania that would be considered minor nations for players to have something to grind towards and a unique experience. Now the big question is, what to do with Germany and Russia, as there are multiple campaigns with both nations currently in the game? This is a bit more complicated, so let's start with Germany first. Basically, you're going to have to break up it into two different factions. Think of the OKW and the Wehrmacht when you've ever played Company of Heroes 2. Basically, you would take the Normandy campaign and say, hey, that's going to be the Western German forces, and then the Moscow campaign being the Eastern German front forces. And you'll have to make some subtle changes to those tech trees because people don't want to unlock an MP40 for the fifth time. On the Russian side of things, I would just make it where the Moscow campaign determines how far in the Soviet progression you are. Basically, you're going to be combining the Moscow and the Stalingrad campaign into a single pool of players that are trying to find a game on the Eastern Front. Now, this leads to our first problem, and that is how are you going to make amends for people that spent $60 for the early access of Stalingrad? And the solution I came up with is that you should give the early access to the Pacific campaign to everyone that paid into the Stalingrad campaign, or something similar. If you guys have a better idea, let me know down in the comments below. With this new system in place, we could now have accurate equipment for each faction and the ability to play all over World War II with a bigger player pool that is now more concentrated, all while keeping that historical feel. So say like D-Day is going to have the British and the Americans fighting the Germans, but you're not going to see Russian Cossacks storming the beaches. I personally think this system solves a lot of Enlisted's problems. It concentrates the player base, it makes the grind a lot less, and it gives the developers a lot more options in the direction they want to take this game. Now there are some problems with this idea, and the first and biggest one is probably going to be it's going to be a lot harder for them to balance four different factions that could all be fighting at once, say like in Sicily. The second problem is, is that players are going to have to accept some historical and accuracies, such as equipment showing up in a battle that was not actually being produced during that time. I mean, if you look at like Operation Torch versus the Battle of the Bulge, the American equipment is quite different. To me, this isn't a huge deal as we already kind of have this. I mean, the Sherman Jumbos were not on Utah Beach, and I think it allows us to have a lot more in-depth game experience. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a historical feeling game with good gameplay versus a strict historical record of the war with a super low player count. The third major problem problem that I kind of noticed is that the Germans on the Eastern Front and the Russians are going to kind of get shafted. I mean, it's not like the Allies on the Western Front that could fight in North Africa, Italy, or even France. The Russians and the Germans are pretty much just stationed in the East. This is unavoidable, but you could make that campaign very fun because you have to think that the Russians pushed all the way from 
the gates of Moscow to Berlin. And that would allow the developers to have a lot of unique experience within that campaign. I mean, think about it. You can go from Sevastopol all the way to the Battle of Kursk. Even with the bad, I 100% believe that the positive outweighs the negative and opens up more options for the developers. Premium squads are now going to hold more value, and you can use them across a broader front. The grind would now be at somewhat of an acceptable rate, and you're going to have a massive amount of customization that you can add, including decals, uniforms, and so forth, in order to increase revenue for Darkflow. New minor factions such as France, Finland, China, etc. can be added into fight in their perspective theaters, making it so you always have something to grind forward to. Towards. Most importantly, I think this adds the ability for you to search in a mode that we're going to call the Grand Campaign, where you just pick a side, either Axis or Allies, where you will be randomly picked a faction and fight in whatever queue that the game decides to put you in. So while one game you could be playing the Germans in Normandy, the next you could be the Japanese defending Tarawa. And in order to get people to use this, I think you should get an XP boost to your progression. Again, this is going to concentrate the player pool and ensure that we have full games. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comment below, and if you haven't already, be be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, scholars, hit those books and hit those bottles. Cheers.